Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of Project Slave 1. This video has taken way longer to finish than I'd hoped, for a variety of reasons. I've got a long list of you guys wanting my Slave 1 files, and stopping to edit a video slows that down, as does the test build. I want you to have a well-designed set of files that you can print and see that with patience they can be put together to create something special. OK, let's get back to the program. In the last episode, you'll have seen the interior parts printed and test fitted to the left and right hand side of the hulls. I've also printed the rest of the parts that make up this massive model. I'm making provision for lighting and wanted to fit some LEDs along the spine to light the interior. I chose these surface mounted ones from Amazon, as they have pins I can solder to or use to attach to the hull. These and all the rest of the hardware I use will be listed in the description. Of course, there will be a full hardware list included with the files. My plan is to power the four LEDs in the spine from a 9 volt battery housed in the tail. To drop the voltage so the bulbs don't blow, I'm using a 470 ohm resistor. With everything wired up and insulated with heat shrink, it's time to light these guys up. Ooh, Barbie lights! Pretty, but not too bright. Once they're in and the hull is sealed, they're there for good. The mounting pins really help hold them in, while I fix them in permanently with some superglue. You could add more, or go for a different style. I'm sure some of you guys will really go to town on these. The tail cap is held on with magnets, so the battery can be easily changed. I have a separate circuit laid in to power the LEDs that are going in the engines. This will be run off another 9 volt battery, but that'll come later. These wires run along the spine and down the inside of the hull through the floor to the engines. A coat of grey car primer will give a good base coat for painting the interior. I've masked off the seam to the two halves of the hull so they get the best chance to bond together when the time comes. Of course, all the interior parts get a coat of primer too. Then it's on to paint. I'm using Archive X paints for pretty much all of Slave 1. This front section and the cockpit area I'm painting SP Lark Dark Grey. It closely matches the original studio model, and I figure for flying in space this would be a pretty credible colour. The Archive X paint sprays really well, has great opacity and is well priced. The rear of the interior I'm spraying a lighter colour. Again Archive X, but this time Light Reefer Grey. You can see the LEDs are installed in the spine, with their downward facing parts masked off while I'm spraying. The full and empty carbonite containers are sprayed in Vallejo steel, which I found to be the best match. Interior parts are sprayed individually, using a variety of Archive X colours. Here the tank for the carbon free system is sprayed in concrete. To paint the stowage boxes, I took some inspiration from the storage boxes in my garage. I've had these for years, they're so useful. I wish I could get more, but sadly, I can't find any. They provide me with some great inspiration for the Slave 1 boxes. These are going to be sprayed in a variety of shades of green, and then varied further with weathering. All the stowage and interior parts are then painted in their final base colours by hand, again just using the Archive X range. These paints go on with a brush really well. I designed a sheet of decals, which should give plenty of scope to add more detail to the interior. There's stencils, vents, access ports, and even Boba's sigil in a variety of sizes. These were just printed out on clear decal paper, and given a spray of varnish from a rattle can. Once fully dry, they can be cut out and applied wherever you like. I added quite a few to the interior, which had a lot of detail and helped break up some of the larger areas. At this stage, I also picked out the crash padding in Archive X Concrete. It works well to define the front and back sections of the interior. Decals were also added to the stowage. I found some old decals and cut them up to add some flashes of colour to some of the boxes. I thought adding Boba's sigil to the workbench would make him feel at home. Again, there's no rules here, I'm just going freestyle. With the decals on and a coat of varnish, I weathered the interior with oils, to give it more of a lived-in look. I'm going for the working starship look. Hopefully this will match the exterior style pretty well. The stowage was also weathered with oils, which helped create some variations in the colours of the boxes and containers. And here's the completed interior, 
with everything in place and fully weathered. How visible it will be, I don't know, but it'll give you plenty of build options. I've also added the magnets for the rotating cockpit at this stage. Of course, I finished the other side at the same time, so now we're almost ready to join the two halves together. But first, there are three parts that must be installed before the hull is sealed. The sliding rear door, the flight deck and the rotating cockpit. The sliding rear door and cockpit do take a bit of fettling to work smoothly due to resin distortion, but are well worth the effort. Make sure you put the magnets in the cockpit unit round the right way, otherwise it won't stay in position. I added the seats to the flight deck at this stage as it was much easier to get them correctly aligned. So, after a lot of test fitting and tweaking, the two halves of the hull are forever joined together with large amounts of superglue. The join is going to need some work to make good, but that's to be expected. The interior looks stunning. I can really imagine Boba living and working in here. Of course, this is my own take on the interior. You could go for something completely different. Slave 1's now getting rather heavy, but let's check out the rear door and see if it works. Yes, it slides up and down, which will be great for displaying Slave 1 landed. Maybe with Han in carbonite being loaded. That would be pretty cool. Now to work on closing up that hole in the belly of the beast. The floor is printed in three sections. The front section has a floor ladder for access to the nose cabin in flight. These will be added to the hull in stages, once painted. The nose cabin and front screen make a simple sub-assembly that again needs painting before installation. While we're on sub-assemblies, let's take a look at the guns. These are designed to be linked by an 8mm diameter bar, which will allow them to rotate together in the tail section. I'm going to replace the gun barrels with metal ones, which I'll mould and cast later. To see how to do this, check out my how-to video series. Now to close up the underside of the tail. The end cap is just held on with magnets, so we can easily replace the batteries for the lights. The white bits of styrene are to correct an issue I found in the design. It's all fixed now for the final files. This end plate is glued in place, as is the floor plate, but this will need the inner surface painting first. Slave 1's printed with the main boarding ramp lowered. The tail ramp is just held on with magnets and comes in a raised or lowered position. To display Slave 1 in flight, the separate raised boarding ramp is added and the raised tail ramp put in place. Of course, all the interior parts get the full paint, decal and weather treatment as well. The dividing wall beneath the cockpit has stowage boxes and the stair up to the flight deck is now painted. The nose cabin is also complete and ready to be installed. I painted the floor panel to the spine to match the interior, picked out the walkway in black and weathered the surface. The inner door to the gun bay also got the full treatment. I decided now was the time to give the outside of the hull some TLC. After a lot of filling and filing, this is the end result. I decided that in some areas it was best to file out the raised detail panels and then add them back in with styrene sheet. This was absolutely the right thing to do, as it didn't take long and looks great. There was a lot of surface filling to do, but it was well worth the effort. The paint scheme will hide a multitude of errors, but I didn't want to rely on that too much. OK, let's stick some more bits on. The rear floor section is super glued in first, after a lot of test fitting. It's important this goes in first, then the front section, then the middle. With the rear floor in, the stair to the flight deck can be added. Don't leave it any later or it'll be a nightmare to fit. The front floor sub-assembly can now also be super glued into place. Just make sure you get it round the right way. The joins are then flooded with superglue to ensure a complete bond. Finally, the centre section goes in. Test fitting beforehand makes certain this goes without a hitch. Again, lots of superglue to seal the join. It's really important that these parts are securely bonded in, as the mounting bracket for the stand attaches here. The nose cabin and front screen then just slot into place, leaving just one part of the interior to finish – the cockpit. 
This focal point is a gem to paint and assemble, and will look amazing once installed. Right now I'm leaving it out until later in the build, when Slave 1 isn't getting quite so much handling. The seated Boba Fett figure will be included in the files. Thanks go out to Bradley Harris for the sculpting. We now turn our attention back to the underside. I now need to lay out the wiring to the engines, as per this diagram. It's the same principle as for the interior, 4 LEDs, a 470 ohm resistor and a 9 volt battery. At this stage I just need to fix the wiring in place, before the underside parts are added. The wiring is held in place with superglue in the channels, in the 3D printed floor sections. The thin white scribed line is for the wing mount, which also has an attachment point for the stand. Now we need to get the wings fitted. The main mount is printed in ABS on an FDM printer for strength and has a hex connector installed to take the stand. I've already glued on the mine plate to the main mount and fitted the mounting pins to the underside. The inner shoulder panels carry the ends of the wing bracing arms. Through these arms passes the aluminium tube which aligns and supports the wings. It's important all these parts align, as they provide the structure for the wings and help reinforce the main mount for the stand. You'll probably need to trim the inner shoulder panels to fit under the shoulders. After a lot of testing, this is how it should fit into the underside of Slave 1. These parts will be glued into place with epoxy, to provide the best possible join and fill any gaps between the parts. With the wing structure in place, I can now fit the wings. These go on part way and then the brace arm is fitted. This is a bit fiddly trying to line all the parts up, but with patience it all goes together. The wing has to be rotated to clear the lower skirt, but it fits in place well. The front wing can then be added, and then the other side assembled. Joining the two wings is a linking bar, so they rotate together. This is made from brass, soldered together and super glued into place once Slave 1 is fully painted. To finish off the wings, we need to build the wing rams. These are made from K&S brass tubing, plugged in the ends with 3D prints, which are then drilled out to accept 3.2mm brass pivot bars. The mount to the wing is a resin print, but the black print is ABS. On the previous version, I had these break, so I decided to go for a stronger option, which works perfectly. This arm is then secured to a socket head screw, which is then glued in place. The rams are easy to install and work well throughout the full movement of the wing, from its landing to flight positions. The next little task is to add these inner skirt details. They had to be printed separately as they're in areas where there are joins to the hull. With them in place, it was time to give the inside of the skirt a coat of primer. This is because I'm displaying Slave 1 at a local model show and I need to have it on a stand. To mount it on the stand, the main mount needs to be reinforced with some other prints, and the underside needs to be painted or at least primed before these are fitted. Once the primers dry, the additional prints are bonded into place with lashings of epoxy. My intention is to make the hull and mount one monolithic structure, strong enough to carry Slave 1. I mixed up plenty of epoxy and fitted the main engine prints, carefully feeding the wiring through the holes. The main engine parts were two prints joined together and dry fitted several times to the wing mount and hull before I was ready to commit. That's the hard bits done, now on to some more details. The front antenna shroud and dish were great prints but still needed a fair bit of TLC to get to this stage. The brass parts were turned up in my Dremel from Brass Rod. 3D prints of these would just be too delicate and be forever breaking. The underside parts of Slave 1 version 2.0 are basically the same as my original, just slightly larger, due to more accurate sizing. The LEDs for the oval engine and main engines are test fitted into place at this stage. I have allowed space for excess wiring beneath the engines, so there's no need for crazy short wires just to squeeze everything in. I'm not going for super bright, just glowing is good enough for me. Barbie lights. The bulb unit can be printed as one piece, in clear resin, but I wanted to make something a bit more special, so decided to get some clear acrylic tube and make up the unit with the LEDs shining through from behind. And this is how the underside parts fit, ahead of the wings. First the oval engine locates in place, the wiring is tucked away underneath. 
The clear bulb assembly is just loosely in place here. Then the wing linking bar is fitted. This should clear the main mount when it's rotated. Finally, the antenna unit is slid into place, completing the front section. The rest of the underside is a bit more complicated, but fits together to make a single unit which can then be installed. It's a bit of a juggle lining everything up, as some parts fit into several others. Again, this is a case of test fitting, trimming and testing again, but it does make up into an impressive unit. The assembled unit can then be fitted to the main engine shrouds. Getting this to fit within the skirt can require a bit of trimming of the underside, just to get clearance. None of this trimming actually shows, and it looks like it was always meant to be there. The main engines are then easily fitted into place, as is the cover plate for the mount to the stand. Now for the elephant in the room. Some of you worked it out from the last episode, but if you don't know, it's canopy time. This is perhaps the biggest make or break part of Slave 1. Let's take a look at my solution. I had hoped that with a bigger printer, I could 3D print a clear canopy. Well, yes, and at the same time, no. My original plan was to design the canopy so it could be printed with minimal supports, which meant minimal cleanup, achieving a clear finish. Firstly, printing was an issue. No matter what I did, I got small bubble inclusions, despite the resin in the vat having no bubbles when I filled it. The print also distorted during printing, so it wouldn't fit the hull. The surface wasn't smooth, this wasn't a major problem as I could polish it, but the resin wasn't fully cured and was still sticky. Post curing worked, but the UV discoloured the print. I decided to experiment. I found resolving the finish easy enough, with some polishing and clear gloss UV lacquer, but the print still needed curing. I found out that a heat gun can reduce the browning. This did actually work, but the print broke with too much heat. I decided that there were too many issues to resolve, and I needed a plan B. The canopy for my original Slave 1 was perfect, so vac forming was definitely the way to go. In my CAD software, I designed the canopy and a frame for it to fit in to make a buck for vac forming. Both of these would be printed on my Ultimaker in ABS. The cradle was easy to print, as it naturally lays flat on the print bed. I printed this with 100% infill, to make it as strong as possible. The canopy itself I printed upside down, as tedious cleanup was inevitable, and this would be easier when it came to the next stage. After a lot of filing, sanding and trimming, the solid canopy fits perfectly on the main hull of Slave 1. I made the canopy 0.3mm narrower on each side, to allow for the vac form. It's important to have a good finish on the print at this stage, as it affects the final quality of the canopy. With the base frame now printed, these two parts can be super glued together. Once this is done, more glue is added to the inside, and the joint filled and cleaned back. I also drilled some small holes in the corners, to help with air evacuation. Now I need to make the buck solid, so it doesn't collapse under the pressure of the vac forming, and also acts as a heat sink to prevent the ABS from getting too hot. To do this, I'm going to fill it with this plaster compound. With the buck supported, I just fill it with the plaster, making sure I've got rid of as many air bubbles as possible. It's surprising just how much it takes to fill. Fortunately, the framework on the print makes getting a level a lot easier. It's really messy, but a lot of fun. I can use the blade to scrape off the excess to get it pretty much level but I'll neaten it up once it's all set. After a couple of hours, and it's gone off, I can sand down the base flat and clean up any edges. It now weighs a ton, and is ready for vac forming. I ordered 20 sheets of 0.5mm PETG sheet from Stephen Webster Plastics, and it came within a couple of days. This is what I used on the previous Slave 1, and it worked well, so why change? It comes with a protective film on both sides, which needs to be peeled off. After a few hours with Steve, my friendly neighbourhood vac former, I came home with some excellent canopies. I kept the best one back for the final finished model, and cut number two to test fit. As you can see, it fits perfectly. I have added some small styrene blocks to the hull, just to hold it in place, but I'm calling this a win. I know, it's been a long video, 
but as you can see, I've made a lot of progress on Slave 1. The interior is now complete, and all the rest of the parts are cleaned up and fitted. I now just have to paint everything, write the instructions, and then release the files into the big wide world. They'll be available to buy securely through my website, as soon as they're ready, which won't be long now. I hope you're enjoying Project Slave 1. If you are, please share with your friends, and make sure you subscribe to my channel, it really helps me a lot. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. To learn about some of the techniques I use, check out my How To series, to find out more about moulding, casting, CAD design and 3D printing. If you have any questions about Project Slave 1, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.